Hello and welcome to Mini Metro. This is a game that I've played for quite a long time on the Nintendo Switch, but I recently bought it on the mobile so I can finally make a video series on this game because I've been wanting to do that for an extremely long time, so I finally got around to just doing it. So if you've never played Mini Metro before, then it's basically kind of what it is in the title, it's a mini metro, so you have to build from the ground up a working metro system in one of several cities, there's quite a few cities that are in the game, levels, um, the first level that you can do obviously is London, the London Underground, the Tube, good old faithful, the original, London Underground, the Daddy as Jamie Clarkson would describe his 1970s golf. Um, but yeah, so I literally just want to get straight into this. I'll sort of go through the details and stuff as as I play, because um, it's kind of difficult to explain without literally showing you, so let's just get straight into it. So, play, and here we go. So we've got London, Paris, New York City, Berlin. Oh, and you can see Paris. I've got no, I've got no personal best on the mobile on London yet because I wanted to start from zero and play through all of the first, all of the levels in normal mode and then all of the levels in hard mode and then for the rest of the foreseeable future I'll do daily uploads and that will be the daily challenge for that day. But um. Uh, yes, yeah, so the first level is London, then Paris. This one accidentally has 963 because I did the daily challenge on that because I was impatient. Uh, then we've also got New York City, Berlin, Melbourne, Hong Kong, Barcelona, that's new, Osaka, Stockholm, Peters St. Petersburg, Montreal, San Francisco, Sao Paulo, I'm not, I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, Seoul, Santiago, I think that's new as well, that's not on the Switch, though Barcelona and Santiago aren't on the Switch, Washington DC, Singapore, Cairo, Istanbul, Shanghai, Guangzhou, I don't think I'm pronouncing that correctly either, that's also not on the Switch, that one's really recent, and we've also got Mumbai, Lagos, I don't even think that's on the Switch as well, and lastly, Auckland. So, we're going to make our way through all of these levels from start to finish. And then, I also think we'll do these few special levels here. So, these ones have um, special requirements to do their special versions. Because you could say that these are like the big three interesting metro systems. I wouldn't really say that though, because I know Shanghai in real life has a really complicated metro system. So do, there, are, there are several other cities in real life that have complicated metro systems. And also, um, there are quite a few bus systems. I know this game is about um, the, the subway, like the underground, the tube trains, and also Melbourne later on is trams. But there are quite a few interesting and complicated busway systems, like the um, basically the entirety of London, Greater London, all the buses in London, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, I literally just want to get straight into this because it's a really good game. Um, I find it very fun to play. Hopefully it, the commentary will be good enough. There doesn't really need to be too much commentary while I'm playing. Um, because it's a very relaxing game to just listen to the music uh, as we play and as the game develops and progresses and it gets more and more complicated, etc. So, let's just get straight into it. London, redesigned the original Underground Railway, the London Tube. And if we have a look at this, to unlock London in the 1960s, we have to score 1,000 in London. And, um... There's an achievement called, called Oyster, which is um, in faith to the, the Oyster cards of London. Oh yeah, that's one thing I like about the achievements in this game are named after like the sort of travel card or travel scheme that is relating to each city. So in London, the achievement for getting 200 is called Oyster. In Paris, the achievement for getting 200 is called Navigo. I think that's the sort of travel card, travel scheme 
thing that is in Paris. Anyway, uh, yeah, like I said for the last time, I just literally want to get straight into this. So, actually, before we do that, I need to put my phone on charge. I should have done this beforehand, but oh well. I'm a moron. There we go. So, yeah, let's just get straight into this, finally. So, we start with three stations. Usually, that's the general amount is is three um I, I, I don't really know what to say to be honest it's very slow to begin with so what we have to do is connect up all of these stations and get the tiny passengers from whichever station they're spawned at to whichever station they need to get to I just need to put that there um yeah so as you can see this triangle station here in the bottom we have to get that circle passenger to whichever circle that he can get to. But because there were no circle stations on the red line, the central line that that would be in real life. Because there were no uh, circle stations on the red line, he had to get off at the triangle station and catch the yellow train to the circles on that line. Now this is something you usually don't want to do. But um, as you can see now there is a circle station on the red line now so any circle passengers that happen to be on this triangle this triangle this square or um yeah this triangle this triangle or this square can now get to a circle here or here and here oh so yeah so it's now week two at the beginning of every new week you get a, a new train and then you can select from either a line or a carriage or a carriage or tunnels like we've got here or a line or a um, interchange. I'm going to select the tunnels because those are really important. They come into play in every single map in the game. The tunnels will come into play um, purely because they are an integral part of the, the, the gameplay if you run out of tunnels, then sometimes it can become really difficult to get passengers from where they are to where they want to be. If there are difficult links to make, if you run out of tunnels, then you have to go all around the houses. Like, if I didn't have a tunnel for right here, I'd have to go all the way around here like that. Um, so, what I want to do now, actually, is shorten the red line so it's not too far for it to travel up to the northern region then i want to connect all of these on the blue line and then circle that background there like that um, and then extend the yellow line up to the northwest i'm going to sort of vaguely try and be slightly faithful to the London Underground. So when I get the opportunity, I'm going to bring the yellow line back to the right, so I so I can then turn that into the circle line, and then I will bring the red line, the central line, over to the west, so that can be slightly more faithful to what the circle line looks like in real life. And then I will replace the the sort of eastern half of the blue the piccadilly line at the moment with green for district you, you'll see as the map evolves you'll see what I'm, I'm sort of trying to get at um it's kind of difficult to explain at the moment without it sounding really complicated because you can't actually see what i'm trying to do yet um so mm, yeah, sometimes, so there was this, there's this YouTuber that I saw quite a while ago who made a, a video, a, a video series on the first few levels of Mini Metro, but I think it was called Skystorm, and in his video, the term he kept using is, sometimes the game will throw you a curveball, which is totally accurate to, and as you can see there, look, achievement unlocked, we got 200, so we've now got the oyster achievement for having 200 passengers delivered in normal mode so um week four train i'm gonna do carriage again and i'm just gonna pause for a second so it's getting a little bit packed on the central line so i'm gonna place another train in there and put a carriage on that train as well so now there are two trains on the central line both with carriages 
so hopefully that can alleviate a little bit of the stress and I'm actually gonna ditch you and put you there so that doesn't get crowded and then this train can come around and pick up the passengers here uh, and I'm gonna lift that up like that um, anyway yeah as I was saying so this YouTuber I watched called Skystorm, I think that was his name, I'll leave a link in the description because he was sort of a little bit of my inspiration to get this video series started. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, in his videos he said sometimes the game will throw you a curveball like that. He said sometimes the game will throw you a curveball and it's a pain to deal with because there are no easy ways of getting to that station without ditching some others. So what I'm going to do, pause the game and sort of rethink the Piccadilly and the Circle because this is getting a little bit too complicated. So I'm gonna do that and actually I'm just, I'm just gonna flat out get rid of that. So we need the circle to be in place as a base for later on when we can connect more stations. Now, in real life, King's Cross I think would be sort of here or here. Um, and I, I can't remember precisely how um, the Piccadilly connects with the Central and Circle lines. Um, so, and it's Friday in the top right you can see that the day is Friday. So hopefully we can get a new line because I want to extend the district out from this circle line. So I'm going to bring Piccadilly up like this. Or now like that. Up, round like that. And then... It's going to go like this and over to there. So, yeah, so when it gets to Sunday, I'm going to get this station, this station, and this station onto the district line. And I'm going to give you a second uh, train because the Piccadilly is quite long at the moment. Might need a third, I'm not sure. Then I'll bring this over here. The central once more. That looks good. I think the circle, yeah, definitely the circle line's going to need another lo locomotive. Oh, and now we have an interchange. That's not what I want. I would really appreciate a new line. Um, yeah, I'd appreciate a new line at this point, game. But we're going to continue with interchange. Pop that there because that's where hopefully all of our stations are going to come out of. Hmm. So where the central line is now in the northeast is probably where the Epping sort of Ongo region is on the real tube map. Um, I just need to think about this for a second because we've got a few stations that are not being picked up where they actually really should be. So I think what I'm going to do is that. Bring you up there. Ah, oh, see, look, this is the bridge problem I was talking about. Running out of bridges is really annoying because now we can't extend eastwards. Or we can't extend centrally without bridges. So, hmm, I just need to think momentarily about this situation that we've ended up getting ourselves into. But on the bright side, the central line is looking sort of how it does in real life, roughly ish, not really. It doesn't really go that far into the southwest. Hmm. One, two, three. That doesn't need to be. And so, right, so the reason why I've extended that round like that, sort of slightly awkwardly, is because it was making a tiny bridge, a tiny tunnel here. So we've now freed up one of our tunnels, which means we can do what I originally wanted to do and do that. Then extend the circle line over to there to pick up that station. So now all the stations on the map are interconnected and I'm going to put another train. Actually, we don't, I don't think we need another train on the Piccadilly. We just need to pick this one up and get you there and then pick this one up and get you there. There we go, so they're now going to go away from each other and hopefully pick up those passengers quickly. Yes, thank you. So yeah, this is, the this is another big gameplay mechanic that really holds this game together, is the overcrowding of stations, which is obviously... <coughs> I apologise, I, I always forget to give myself a, a glass of water when I make videos. 
which is um, something I should do. But yeah, um, another big gameplay mechanic in this game is the overcrowding. Like I said, pulls the game together and really is another thing that makes you have to think carefully about, you know, the length of your lines, how many trains are on your lines, which stations multiple lines will stop at, if, if, if at all, like you can see down here. The, the central and circle both stop at the this station and this station and obviously that station there with the um, interchange is going to be like the central hub for where all our lines come out of if we get any more lines I mean seriously what's going on here we've only got we've only got the Piccadilly central and circle and we've only, we're only getting interchanges and carriages and tunnels and we don't even have any more tunnels so I'm going to select um, carriage. I'm going to extend the Piccadilly line north, and I'm going to put another train going um, clockwise. So we've got, we've now got, oh, all three trains on the circle line are going clockwise. I usually want at least one going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to grab. Hang on, let me just play, press play again. Grab that and make it go anti-clockwise. Then... <coughs> Sorry. Ah, <laughs> oh, so there is a bit of an overcrowding problem going on here. Hopefully, Central Line's taken care of that good, but it's gonna barrel straight on through and deliver those passengers. So I'm gonna let the triangles get off, then the square, the, the squares get off, then the triangles. Then pause, grab this, and put you there so that station doesn't overcrowd and the game ends. Which I don't want to happen quickly, thank you very much. Circle line in the south there. Piccadilly line, you're going to have to go over there I'm afraid because I don't have any spare lines to alleviate these issues that are arising. We don't have any spare lines, we don't have, we should have Victoria, District, Bakerloo and Hammersmith and City. And all we've got is the three base lines that we started with. And everything's getting a little more hectic now because we're on week seven. New line, finally, right. Pause the game. So, what needs to happen now? We've got this station overcrowding, Piccadilly line is frankly too long and an unrealistic length too. <coughs> Central line I think is too long as well. So what I'm gonna do is Bring the Victoria line from the east through sort of central-ish London to there. And then when we get more tunnels, extend it to this triangle station in the south. And we're going to bring the circle line down like that. And we're going to also put another train on the central without a carriage, without a spare carriage on the back. But... We might add this spare carriage we've got over here to that train if the uh, central line continues to be crowded. Now, I don't live in London, but obviously you can tell by my accent, I am British. Um, but I have travelled on the Victoria line before, and I would say that's probably one of the more annoyingly busy lines in London. The Victoria line is really difficult to get to where you want to go without um you know i i always want to wait for the next train but then the next train always ends up being as packed as the first so i may as well have just gotten on the first train in the first place um i don't like how these trains are gonna have to pull in here and then stop and reverse out they can't just barrel on straight through so i'm going to sort of reorganize the order that these get stopped at in like that. I know it's a weird sort of spiral. It wouldn't be like that in real life because this station is closer to this station by foot, but it gets to this station last. Um, but I don't really care. Um, so, I think what needs to happen is we're gonna leave the Victoria line north of the river if we get the option between tunnels or line, uh, uh, tunnels or a new line, <clears throat> we're going to select the district line, which is the next line, this one here, the district line, and connect these stations together in the south because they're getting overcrowded. 
and leave the tunnels until the next week because the Victoria Line is actually doing a pretty decent job of keeping some of these stations in the north um, sort of not crowded. So let's just press play. I'm actually going to play at normal speed now. I like playing in fast forward, but <coughs> I want to get to a thousand in this video. Also, my voice is going, which is my fault. Next video, I will have a glass of water with me. Um, but yeah, I want to get to a thousand in this video, so I don't want to let these get overcrowded. So I'm going to put you there. I'm going to give this carriage to the Piccadilly line and just stop some of these problems from occurring. And oh, right, this is about to get really crowded. So to stop that from really getting bad, lift that from the north of the circle and bring it down, and then. I'm actually going to zoom in here because my when you pick a train up it puts it north of your finger so you can actually see where you're putting it but my phone screen sort of on the edges sometimes doesn't really pick up where your finger is like down here sometimes it gets confused either way I've put that there so hopefully that station doesn't overcrowd quickly thank you very much I'm just going to do this now to so it has no chance of overcrowding and then that circle line train has also just traveled straight through so those are going to drop off all of its triangles so this triangle station doesn't get overcrowded and then that station will get its passengers picked up so let's hope that happens soon oh and we've just over we've just gone over a thousand earl gray uncommon achievement and i've leveled up so, yeah, so I, I was hoping that would happen in this video. Now we can sort of slightly relax in terms of um, game over. I still want to try and keep it going for as long as possible. That's another um, fun part about this game. You get to watch as your map expands from the first three stations to, I think some maps can have about 40. Um, obviously the tube map in real life, the London Underground in real life has 237 I've probably gotten that wrong but yeah either way oh and a new line right so I'm gonna pause and say what I wanted to do so I want to connect these lines th these stations in the south with the district line because it's just getting way too crowded um, I don't like it when that happens so I'm gonna make that over there nope I'm just rearranging these so the, the di oh no right I'm I'm trying to rearrange these lines so the the district it stays on the outside like that and then and then the set that the uh, circle needs to be there I just want to press play for a second right, stop the circle needs to be there then the district needs to be on the inside then there yeah, there we go right that sort of looks okay um so yeah I want to have the district in the south to connect all of those stations as sort of a, um, I think intermediary might be the wrong word, <laughs> but um, just to help with the circle line being quite large as it is currently, um, just to help in that department, I'm actually going to get rid of that so it's less stations to travel to and bring the Victoria line back up into the north. Um, I think this is sort of going to be okay for now. Yeah, that seems alright. Oh, so yeah. So the district line at the moment isn't going to be too helpful because it's only got one train and I don't have any carriages or spare trains. If the next time we get the option between the, um, between lines and tunnels, I'll choose another line. If we get the option between anything and carriages, I'm going to choose a carriage. Now this is getting concerning the level of um, overcrowding that's happening now because we've got lots of circle stations in a row. Circle, circle, yeah, circle, 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 circle. I think game over is going to happen very soon. So what I want to do is reposition. That needs to go past there. And then I need to put you back here. Right. Are we going to do it? No, ah, oh, that was a shame. Well, we've got 1,127 passengers travelled on our metro over 51 days. 
let's play that back and see what our map ended up looking like. So let's press play and have a look. So yeah, you saw there, that's that's where I... Um, I had the uh, cent the um, central line going into the southeast where the trams would be in real life. Then I got rid of that and put the Piccadilly line in there. So, okay. I'll play from the beginning and then we can analyse after. Rearranging the circle line. Piccadilly into the northwest. Victoria line into the north and district in the south. So... It's not really very realistic to what the tube map looks like in real life. Um, in real life, the district follows the circle in the north. The northern line obviously would be coming across right around here. Northern line going into the north. And then the branch lines in the central London and then going into the south. Victoria line starts up in the, in the northeast near Stratford, I believe. And then comes all the way down into the west near Victoria, London, Victoria train station. Central doesn't really do this, it sort of goes up and then has the Epping loop line. I can't remember what that's called. And then this is sort of realistic, but it doesn't I don't believe it goes south of the river that far. I think it because I think it comes back over not under north again and then continues over in this direction. Piccadilly line I don't think is realistic either. I believe the Piccadilly line also starts in the sort of northeastern region and comes down through central London and into the south. Similar to the Victoria, but obviously going different routes. If we'd have played further, then we would have unlocked the Hammersmith and City line, which would have run along there and then sort of along the district as well. Um, and then Bakerloo, I think, comes sort of across like this. And in this game, you don't get loads of, of uh, lines because it would get really complicated really quickly. It's sort of... It's not extremely simple this game, but it's simple enough to have fun and enjoy it. If there was also the overground, which would get really complicated, the Northern Line, the Metropolitan Line, uh, the trams, the DLR, um, and the Waterloo and City Line, that would all get really complicated really quickly. So I think the amount of lines that you start off with in this game is sort of the sort of perfect amount um so yeah i don't think we did too bad right now i would probably press this and continue in endless but what i'm going to do is just go back to the menu and end this video here and as you can see we have now unlocked london 1960 so the next video we're not going to do london 1960 yet we're going to do um all of these stations for the next uh, I think week uh, two weeks ish and then in the new year I just realized this this video this series is going to start now and, and go well into the new year and further beyond probably I, I want it to become a daily series by doing the daily challenge every single day because this game is really easy to play really easy to edit and really easy to upload so I want this to become daily by after completing all of the normal mode challenge, not all of the normal mode levels, then doing London 1960, Paris 1937, and New York 1972 in normal mode. Then we'll do all of the levels in extreme mode. We'll, I think, I want to leave out endless and do that as a sort of offshoot series with no commentary because that's really fun to just watch the map expand and. Um, yeah, because the gameplay style for Endless Mode is quite different to normal. Um, so yeah, all the levels in normal, all the levels in extreme. Then we'll have the endless sort of offshoot videos maybe once a week. And then we'll move on to the daily series probably sometime in January, late January. Um, but yeah, that is the end of this video for now. Thank you for watching. See you in episode 2 when we will do Paris Normal Mode. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.